I suppose that is about what there is to say about this one. If you like confrontation of being confronted with serious subjects dealt with in a way that really doesn't shy away or glamorize anything if you think you are open to this I would definitely at least go for a rental. Don't make it the first Salons film you watch, though. And don't be fooled by the controversy. This really isn't sensationalist. It doesn't try to downplay how bad and how hurtful, how harmful these destructive activities are. It is just looking to help explain them, remind us that they are human beings just like the rest of us. Anyway, this has been Skip, Rent, or Buy, and that was my spoiler free review of Happiness. I hope you enjoyed it. Right from the first scene, this just had me. I mean, Salons just has that special touch, you know. Please don't make any bad touch jokes. I mean, it doesn't take us long to realize that... You know, John Lovitz's character, and I think I should just refer to him as that because he's in this so little that we barely remember his name afterwards. Okay, it's Andy, but still. We realize almost immediately that the situation is that he's getting dumped. And then... You know, just the... The pain, you know, is there someone else... No, it's just you. And then, you know, he sits there, wallows in self-pity, and then he shows her, you know, this gift that he got for her, and, you know, just look at it, and, and that's this and that, you know, it costs a lot of money, it's really pretty, and she just loves it. And then he takes it back, just, you know, trying to make her feel bad, you know, it's, he, he can't handle rejection like a lot of people in real life. And then, not that much later we find out that he committed suicide after that, and, and when she finds out they're at work, the pulling back, zooming back, pulling back, I think it was, of the camera from him lying there dead to the, you know, we see the them, you know, going to be putting him away, and, you know, then the detective there with the cell, 
that was pretty good. You know, she finds out at work, and then, you know, nobody else remembers him. Probably because, you know, sorry, love it, but you're not terribly attractive. I think you already know because you make jokes about it in several movies and, you know, guest appearances in shows. You were hilarious in Two and a Half Men. Anyway, nobody else remembers him, and she's just sitting there and listening to her sister and the other telemarketers, and they're all like, oh, is he the, this and that? Oh, what is that actor's name? You know, I know, if I just go through the alphabet, I'll remember his name. And she's she gets a call from the mother, who just, you know, yells this horrible judgment upon it. You know, it's just... Joy really goes through a lot in this. I mean, she's one of the characters who has it worst in this. I like the little detail of when Bill, I think his name was, you know, Dr. Maplewood, is masturbating in his car. We see, you know, a family going out, you know, and, and children. For half a second, I thought Salons was, you know, gonna have one of the kids go, Mommy, what's that man doing? Or something, you know, you know, he would. Seriously, he's, yeah. He's gone there and he's gone way worse. I really liked the regret and the pain of Dr. Maplewood's character. I mean, you could tell he hated that about himself, you know? And just, you know, and there's, there's that gradual thing of, you know, at first It's, he, he chooses a child that the father thinks is gay, you know, as a sort of, you know, we never actually hear him try to rationalize this, but I would say he probably is, you know, he's thinking maybe he would sort of enjoy it, you know, and obviously not saying that he did. Rape is never, ever right, never excusable. It can be understood why the rapist, you know, committed the rape, but it can never be excused. And then the next victim we don't hear anything about possibly being gay or anything. There's just the possibility, you know, not of him being gay, but of the doctor raping him. It's just that, you know, he's home alone. At first I actually thought that that was going to be a lie, that he was claiming that his parents had, you know, left him alone. I don't know, not even a babysitter? Isn't he also supposed to be 11 or 12 or so? Anyway. I don't know, maybe that happens in suburbia. I admittedly had to stifle a laugh when Alan, I think his name was, was sitting there talking about how boring he was, and he knew he was boring, everybody found him boring, and then we start to hear Dr. Maplewoods go over his shopping list mentally while he's listening to Alan. You know, it... Yes, that was funny, I will admit that. Horrible, horrible, but really funny. 
And is it just me, or did we sort of continue to hear it once it actually went back to us hearing Alan talk? It, it sounded like, almost subliminally, you know, you kept hearing these items that he needed to pick up at 7-Eleven or whatever, wherever he was going. Ooh, product placement. The passive-aggressive nature of Trish or Trisha was pretty convincing and it really highlighted the fact that she herself isn't happy, you know, because it's... passive-aggressive behavior is when someone is afraid to completely outright show that they're angry you know, maybe they're afraid of the consequences, but they are angry and they are unhappy. And her utterly vacuous comments, I mean, there was the time at work where, you know, suddenly they're talking about an actor. Maybe it was Antonio Banderas. Anyway, I don't know. They said something with a... No, wait, he had three names. Anyway. back to vacuous comments by her. The... Her on the phone, when... I, I don't know, maybe the... parent had to go to a job in the evening, and, you know, her child was sick or something. Maybe she's a single parent also. And it... And Trisha's response is, well, you're really not giving me very much time, you know. <laughs> okay, this person is clearly asking for your help. Could you be a little more understanding? You, you keep saying that you have everything. You have, you know, two kids, I think. Yeah. Anyway, big house, successful doctor for a husband, you know... And Timmy, I think his name was... Oh, and she has a cleaning lady also. Timmy was another perfect picture of a spoiled brat from suburbia, you know. Running in this costume with the toy gun right past the maid who is on her knees. I think she was a black woman too. You know, it was a Latino in storytelling, and then, you know, with the kids standing there, this isn't a spoiler, it's in the trailer, the kids standing there talking to her, not offering to help, you know, just talking to her, and, you know, while she's there washing the floor, you know, and like little Missy, the princess, welcome to the dollhouse, and off-screen mentioned in palindromes. Anyway, yeah, there were a lot of selfish people, and in fact, I would say all of them had negative qualities to them. I mean, Joy maybe didn't do anything destructive towards others, but her naivete was, you know, it hurt herself, you know, I mean, Could you really not tell that Vlad was you know, there to have sex with her? I, I don't know. And then, you know, he stole her guitar and her CD player. You know, her guitar, she writes songs, dude. Could you just pick up something slightly less important to her if you, you know, are gonna steal anyway?